It is another brand new week. Welcome to another brand new episode of our weekly devotion with yours truly. A man named Bob May. He was depressed and broken hearted. And he would stare out of his frosty apartment window into the cold, chilling December night with his four year old daughter Barbara sat on his lap, quietly sobbing. You see, Bob's wife, Evelyn, was dying of cancer. Little Barbara couldn't understand why her mommy could never come home. Barbara would look up to his dad, uh, to his dad's eyes and ask, why isn't mommy just like everybody else's mommy? Upon hearing that, Bob's jaw tightened and his eyes well with tears. Her question brought waves of grief, but also of anger. It had been the story of Bob's life, you see. Life always had to be different for Bob. When he was a kid, he was small, like... And Bob was often bullied by other boys. He was too small, too little at the time to compete in sports. He was often called names he would rather not remember. I remember when I was a kid, people called me Tapo because my name, Tok, sounds like Toad and I'm too small to be a Toad, so they call me Tapo. Can you imagine that? So from childhood, Bob was different and never seems to fit in. Bob did, he did complete college, married to his loving wife and was grateful to get his job as a copywriter at Montgomery Ward, a leading departmental store chain that operated between 1872 and the year 2001. So he was, you know, uh, grateful for his job. And then he was blessed with his little girl. But it was all short-lived. You see, Evelyn's belt with cancer stripped them of all their savings. And now Bob and his daughter were forced to live in a little apartment in in the Chicago slums. Evelyn died just days before Christmas in 1938. Bob struggled to give to his child for whom he could not even afford to buy a Christmas gift. But, this is a big but, if he couldn't afford a gift, he was determined to make one, a storybook. See, there's always light in the tunnel, not at the end of the tunnel if we care to look for. He couldn't buy a gift, but he was determined to make one. He was determined to create a storybook. See, Bob had created an animal character in his own mind and told the animal story to little Barbara to give her comfort and hope. Again and again, Bob told the story, story, embellishing it more with each telling. Who was this character? What was the story or about. You may know this. The story Bob created was his own autobiography in fable form. The character he created was a misfit outcast like he was. The name of the character? Well, it's the little reindeer named Rudolph with a big shiny nose. Well, Bob finished the book just in time to give to his little girl on Christmas Day. But the story doesn't end there. It gets better. See, the general manager of Montgomery Ward, the departmental store that Bob worked for, caught wind of the little storybook and offered Bob a nominal fee to purchase the rights to print the book. Yes, finally, you know, he had some something to live on. And the departmental store went on to print Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and distribute it to the children visiting Santa Claus in their stores. And so, by 1946, the departmental store had printed and distributed more than 6 million copies of Rudolph. Can you imagine that? To be able to print six, distribute 6 million copies is amazing. And that same year, a major publisher wanted to purchase the rights from Wards and to print an updated version of the book. So, in an unprecedented gesture of kindness, the CEO of Montgomery Ward returned all the rights back to Bob May. And the book became a bestseller. 
and Bob, now remarried with a growing family, became wealthy from the story he created to comfort his grieving daughter. But the story doesn't end there. It gets better. You know this song. Well, Bob's brother-in-law, Johnny Marks, made a song adaptation to Rudolph. Though the song initially was turned down by such popular vocalists like uh, Bing Cosby and Diana Shaw, it was recorded by the singing cowboy Gene Autry, Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer, uh, was released in 1946 and became a phenomenal success, selling more records than any other Christmas song with the exception of White Christmas. The gift of love that Bob May created for his daughter so long ago kept on returning back to bless him again and again and again. You never know what gifts you may have because Bob May learned the lesson just like his dear friend Rudolph that being different isn't so bad. In fact, being different can be a blessing. Well, the scripture had told us this in Romans chapter 6, uh, chapter 12, verses 6 to 8. It says that in His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously if god has given you leadership ability take responsibility seriously if you have a gift of showing kindness to others do it gladly we are all different and therefore don't waste your uniqueness rudolph was different shiny red nose bob may was different i am different you are different it is our unique is our uniqueness that made us stand out. So this Christmas, I want to encourage you to enjoy your life despite being different. Remember, your life has an expiration has an expiration date. So enjoy it, and Merry Christmas to all. God bless you all.